To his last days, he was there for her. Even when his illness slowed him down, he never failed to tend to mom's needs. He did everything he could for his beloved wife, from driving her to work, to this hospital, and then to this medical facility, and then to the private practice at day's end. Year after year after year, for 35 years. Keep in mind he had two young boys in grade school who had basketball practices and friends to hang out with at their homes. Dad was a Mr. Mom before the phrase was even coined. He ran my mom's private practice like a well-oiled machine. Throw in running rental properties that at one time totaled roughly 10, his plate was always full. But he loved it every step of the way. It was fun for him, he worked hard, and always enjoyed the results from it. He loved landscaping. He planted a lot of trees and bushes in his day. Man, did he plant. At some point, when these trees and bushes grew tall, you couldn't even see the house from the street. My brother and I finally won him over and clearing a lot of it out years later, and the house is visible again. I think he liked how it looks today. In fact, I know he did. He just, wouldn't, he just wouldn't admit his way was too much. I would not be a good son if I didn't talk about the music. Dad played the piano and his electric keyboard whenever he got the chance. It gave him great joy. It was his outlet. It seemed to transplant him to a different place. I could see it in his eyes. At times I thought I was watching Michael Buble. The man had flair. He really hammed it up whenever I videoed him, and I have many videos to prove that. Every morning and evening in my dad's last days, he would listen to 50s music on channel 947 of his TV. The man loved Frank, Dean Martin, Nat King Cole, and Doris Day. They were the songs of his youth. From now on, when I hear those songs, I will always picture my dad as that young, skinny man we all see in those pictures, full of smiles and life. I'm certain my dad enjoyed his moment in the sun, and that music transported him back. And now, in a way, it transports us all. During my dad's two-year battle with cancer, he fought it valiantly and with a quiet dignity. I recently looked up the dictionary meaning of the word stoic. Stoic, a person who can endure pain or hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. <clears throat> Another meaning, a person who accepts what happens without complaining or showing emotion. That was him. That was Dad. He faced it down and never blinked, never wavered. I believe Dad, in spite of his cancer diagnosis, made a decision, a decision he made in a split second, to stay committed to living his life the way he wanted to do, the way he wanted, and to do things that gave him joy, which at the time was to be with his boys, play his piano, hang out with his wife, and, ha and help manage our properties. He loved life unabated. He lived life unabated and without complaint. He went to his doctors, got his tests, and took the medicines and, and fought the cancer 110%, but never strayed from his commitment to live life the way he wanted. He did it with courage and dignity. Before he left this earth, he thanked all his doctors for all they did. He was a beautiful man. He thought of them, even though he knew he was going to die. The day before Dad died, we were all around him, 
my brother, my mom, the girls and myself. I asked Dad if he was okay. He raised his hands both high to the sky and gave a double thumbs up and held them up for what seemed like an eternity. Dad thinking about us. That was Dad thinking about us, not him. Thank you, Dad, courageous, loving, and dignified to the very end. I will miss you. We will all miss you. Your life and how you lived it will be my guide for the rest of my life. And I believe inspire others too. A life well lived. Until we meet again, Poppy. Love you. Thumbs up. Each of us writes a testament of our lives by the way we live each day. And as we've gathered to remember Ed's life, we thank God for the witness of his faith. Let us now stand and pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Edgar may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Following our prayers of committal, here we will proceed to the cemetery for the burial prayers. Following the prayers at the cemetery, Ed's family invites everyone to come back to the school building. There will be a luncheon available for everyone. If you're not able to go to the cemetery, you're welcome to go on over to the school and then wait for the family to return. It will be an opportunity to continue to support one another and share the beautiful stories that are a part of Ed's life. Brothers and sisters, trusting in God, we have prayed together for Edgar, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Ed again and enjoy his love and friendship. Although this family and congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ, that our prayers might rise before you like incense, O Lord.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Edgardo in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Edgardo in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us now take our brother to his place of rest. Our closing hymn is in the green hymnal, number 510. Sing with all the saints in glory. Thank you. 